Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Evans. Well, it's the end of one year and the beginning of another. A time of renewal. Maybe you're thinking about making your life better in some small or, or large way. Maybe it's a lifestyle change like quitting smoking or walking more. Maybe it's about being more grateful for what you have. Or calling your mom more often. Maybe it's to travel around the world. Almost half of us make a commitment to making a positive change in our lives for the new year. And when I think about it, that's pretty incredible. Maybe something we need to learn a bit more about. Dr. John Norcross, a leading researcher in New Year's behavior change, is a clinical psychologist at the University of Scranton in Pennsylvania. He and his colleagues have answered many questions about resolutions. I guess the first question is, do they work? And the answer, surprisingly in some ways, is yeah, they kind of do. Dr. Norcross had two research assistants call random people in Scranton to ask them about resolutions between December 26th and December 31st. Over 400 agreed to be studied. It turned out there were three groups, those that weren't interested in making a change, those that were in the contemplation stage, interested in making a change, but just not at New Year's, and finally those that wanted to make a New Year's resolution. 41% wanted to make a New Year's resolution, and, and the three top behaviors were, number one, weight loss, uh, followed by starting an exercise program, and then stopping smoking. Now, when they followed up with the contemplators, so the people who initiated their change at another time than New Year's, it showed about half were still successful after two weeks of making a change, but then the success rate dropped to about 4% after six months. So, not so good in the long run. But when we look at those that made their commitment to change at New Year's, 71% remained successful through weeks one and two, and their success rate dropped to about 46% at six months. That means, at least at six months, people who picked New Year's as their time of change were 10 times more successful. Now, I suspect in the real world, this change might be an overestimate because of things like the participants being studied and, and some unintended bias and selection, but still, that's a significant improvement. So I have two questions about this. Why is the success rate higher when you make your resolution at New Year's? And two, what is it about the 46% that made them more likely to be successful at six months and, and sustain the positive behavior? Well, it's difficult to say what it is precisely about New Year's, but I think a lot of what we do is about culture. And, and I think New Year's creates a pocket to stop and, and to think, to be mindful, to reflect, to go public with a change and to support others that are changing as well. This ability to reflect is, is the key educational skill I want my students and residents to have. To be what we call a reflective learner. To see our personal strengths and weaknesses. To have clarity about priorities. To balance optimism with realism. To have flexibility. We all have the capacity for this type of learning, but our busyness and I, and I think our habits often get in the way. To answer the second question about the attributes of successful changers is even more interesting and, and I think more science-based. My own read of the literature is, I think, in many ways the reverse of what most people think. Many of us, when we think of successful change, often think of big goals and use terms like motivation, willpower, and self-control. You have these attributes if you're successful, and if you don't, you'll fail. Well, I kind of see the reverse. I see success linked with small goals and small wins. I see more facilitation than motivation, more self-monitoring than self-control. Willpower isn't static. It, it kind of comes and goes, and in, instead of fending off one urge after another, these people set up their lives to minimize temptations. Science tells us if you have a bigger bucket of popcorn, you'll eat it. Good changers know this, and they play offense, not defense. They schedule weekly activities or games throw out the ashtray, they, they put out their running shoes, they use their high willpower moments to prepare for their low willpower moments. They, they cut fruits and veggies and put them at the front of the fridge. They call and, and make an appointment with the trainer. I think we're creatures of habit. We do the same things over and over and, and, and looking at your average week for low hanging fruit is a great start. How can you make your trip to work a bit harder? Can you do a little homework to change up your shopping slightly to, to make that food that you graze on more nutritious? Can you replace your flavored drinks with plain old water? Can you say hi to the odd person you don't know? Can you sit in traffic and, and just be in the moment instead of honking the horn? When I think of successful changers, I, I actually don't think of the CEO laying out a large agenda or goals. I think more of the plumber or carpenter. These people come prepared with tools. They know they need to reframe and adapt older structures, uh, but they also know they can build what needs to be built. 
better habits, one room at a time. Now, January was named by the Romans to honor Janus, the god of beginnings and transitions. He faces both the future and the past, and, and I think that is what is special about New Year's. Learning from the past, but pointing to a new you and saying, that's where I want to go. I hope this helps you get there. Happy New Year. Thank you.